Hey everyone, this is episode 77 of Noodle Time. Welcome back. Here with me is someone that's not having a good week, OSG. How's it going, sir? Yeah, chilling, chilling, bro. Chilling. You know, same old, same old. Nothing going on. You know, no football. Texans are out. So it was just a Man City weekend with uh, Man City beating Tottenham, men men and women. So uh, that, that's, where, that's where I'm at this weekend. Just chilling, but... That's already happened, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm chilling. What's going on with you? Oh, this week has been interesting soccer-wise. I also got the Dynamo news to talk about, but particularly since I follow uh, Real Madrid, has been an interesting couple of weeks considering the officiating stuff and VAR, which is a conversation on, on itself. And hmm. and also joining us uh, for this episode is Juan Pereira. Um, uh, I would say like a fellow Barcelona fan that's not so happy right now. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of struggling right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday was actually my dad's birthday as well. So, oh, man. <laughs> yeah. So we went, uh, we watched Everton in the morning and Barcelona closer to the afternoon. And both teams lost in the last minute or so. So it was definitely an interesting day yesterday. But, I mean, the Dynamo also had an interesting week as well, not because of signings, but it seems like everything else but signings. So, yeah, I'm excited to go into it. No, yeah. A uh, couple things to talk about. Uh, we're we're going to be focusing on the Dynamo in this episode. We we did just get the schedule for the Dash, uh, but we're still waiting on the preseason roster, so we're going to go ahead and leave that for the next one. But for now, we're just going to be talking all things Dynamo, particularly uh, this week, because in the second week of preseason, uh, Glenn Davis posted an interview with Pat Onstead uh, mentioning what's been going on behind the scenes, and he provided a few nuggets in that interview. The main one, which has been the topic of conversation for all Dynamo fans, uh, to to just to, to start getting anxious, like even even before, uh, um, like in the second week of preseason camp, it's just the fact that HH and Caicedo are not available. HH has uh, suffered a leg injury. Uh, we we don't know the specifics of that. We just know that it's a leg injury, and he's currently receiving treatment in Europe. And Caicedo is currently out for personal issues. Apparently, has is having. Uh, issues regarding entry to the, uh, to the U.S. and that's all we know so far. And as expected, like we we have been talking about it on social media, and just the timing itself is just like not not ideal, especially uh, starting things off with the preseason camp and coming off a pretty slow off season when not, there hasn't been like a lot of movement in the roster and uh, the player. Uh, we, we are just sticking with the players that we had from last year. And at least for me, this is extremely worrying. Obviously, we're going to be without Achache, which has been the team MVP last year. And the fact that the players have to are going to be missing that role model, like on the field, potentially for the, next, for the first a few months of the season is not ideal either. And... The one that also hits hits me hard the most is the fact that Caicedo so uh, Caicedo could be missing, uh, depending on the situation that he's in, and uh, with with the potential that he may not be on the team anymore. And for me, it's just incredibly like like it gets me anxious <laughs> before the before we even roll the ball in the preseason. So, how are you guys feeling? Um, well, let's just make it. Let's just make it easy and start with with Caicedo first. And and Caicedo, it, it it's starting to look like you know, some, some other information is leading towards he's not going to be able to return. And I think Pat gave him a deadline, anyways, to, for for like ro- roster. It's February something or whatever, where they got to turn their roster in. So roster compliance. So uh, it looks like Saicedo's not going to make it, man, and he won't be on the team. So that backups that backups out of there for Arthur, for, for Ache Ache. Uh, as far as Ache Ache, dude, man, that's it is, it is killer. It is killer. MVP, 22, 21 assist, whatever it, it was that he ended up with at the end of the season, how many times he uh, contributed to a goal that he may not have assisted on. Man, he's just a, a a piece, a a main piece in the middle of the Dynamo that we're going to miss pretty well, and uh, it it could be as much as four months. Uh, it it could be as many as a few weeks into the season. So, 
Uh, I'm prepared for the four month end of it to where it's going to take a while, but he, he flew to Portugal. I guess he has his own personal doctor back there, which is good. So it's going to find out what's really wrong and get, get a real timetable. And I'm sure when about a week, we'll find out a real timetable and maybe not. And then, you know, once you start seeing him back in practice, it's going to be all right. I thought you had to tell him back. But as far as shoot, filling the role, this is where Coco now, glad we didn't sell him, but we'll then put Coco in Ache Ache's position and then put like Seba in Coco's position. Will we'll, we'll Ben do that? I don't know. I hope so. That's what everybody else is thinking. That's just the first thing that everybody else is thinking. Glenn even asked. Even asked Pat, and Pat wouldn't answer him straight up. So uh, it's uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious as to what could happen too. So uh, Juan, what, 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 what were your thoughts on Nachiache as well? So first, I just want to say up right before I say anything that I do not think that Ache Ache um, leaving the team for a little bit is a good thing. Okay, just prefacing what I'm about to say, but there is a little bit of opportunity here for the Dynamo to take advantage of Coco playing in his natural position and Seba playing in his natural position, okay? I feel like last year, our play style was built around Ache Ache, right? And it made players a little bit more reliant on him, which was, isn't a bad thing when you have an MVP-type player. But now, with Coco playing in his natural position, being more of someone that can distribute the balls down the field, and Seba, who's just as creative, if not more than a mean bossy, I feel like we can be a lot better in the final third in terms of shot creation from just having Basi and Seba playing at the same time and not competing for that same spot like they were last year. So obviously it sucks that Ache Ache and Kaiseido will be probably be unavailable from the beginning. And like you said, Kaiseido might not play at all this year. But I feel like this just opens up an opportunity for a guy like Seba, which we signed permanently. And Brooklyn Reigns, I'm, I'm going to talk about him right now. Um, I think he's the future for this team. And it's about time he gets some more playing time. Last year, he got some US Open Cup minutes, early MLS minutes. I mean, if he's matured any from when we last saw him, I think he can be a serviceable backup to whoever's going to be playing in that Ache Ache position until Ache Ache returns. And it will be very interesting to see how the Dynamo use him because rotation will be key, especially on a thin squad like they are now. So obviously it sucks that Ache Ache is out, but like I said, this could be an opportunity. Not a benefit, but an opportunity for some guys to step up and hopefully produce some results. Well, yeah, and the one thing that I wanted to say, or at least I see relying to all of this, is the fact that we have players that can definitely fit uh, the, the roles for Achache and Caicedo. And the one criticism that I've been seeing a lot from fans uh, coming from last year is just the fact that Coco hasn't been utilized sufficiently, or rather having that same role that he has with the national team, that he's just finding success. Because there's success with him, obviously, uh, being the Gold Cup MVP tells you a lot coming out from last year and, and and yeah the fact that we have coco still available uh, thankfully uh, obviously he's, get, he's still getting interest but he has, we haven't received like an offer for him but the fact of the matter is that we still with the team and that's big for us right now when it comes to seba obviously he hasn't been seeing like a lot of playing time last year but this gotta be his time to shine so we're gonna have players that can fill those roles right away and just going back to Brooklyn Reigns, Oh, uh, so he's, he's still young, but at some point we're gonna we're gonna have to see him in the uh, first team roster more more consistently. So it's it's gonna be interesting to see all three players how that manages out and how Brooklyn Reigns, like for me specifically, how he what his participation is in the, into the preseason. I agree. We we go bring a winger in here, or one that specifically plays on the right side, and that puts Bossy back into the midfield too, as well. With Seba playing that that role, so Coco, Arthur, Seba, Bat, Bossy, <coughs> with probably Bossy and, and and Seba rotating between each other, getting games right there. Hopefully, Seba getting you know a lot of games because he looks good and he's got a lot of potential, and we well, we all believe that he fits in and 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 fits in naturally with the way we play. So. Uh, it's it's not such a Ache Ache missing. It's not such a like dang. It's that's killer, dude. That's killer, bro. But it does hurt, and we, we, and we've seen how the team plays when Ache Ache's not on the field. They're missing that last cohesiveness, go con, whatever. But uh, so we'll see if they can figure that out. It's gonna be Eric's turn to step up and be that leader that he's been enforcing already. So. 
Uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, Achiacho will come back fresh midway through the season. I think if he does the long term, he, he's going to return right before League's Cup with, with a couple games to uh, freshen up before League's Cup. And then so he'll be back for the final stretch of the season. And, you know, hopefully, you know, we're still in that bubble and, you know, we haven't failed because we're missing one friggin' player. <laughs> and other teams have been improving yeah. around us. <clears throat> Yeah, and something else I wanted to talk about real quick when it comes to moving Bossy to the midfield, possibly. Ali has been playing on the wing recently. Like, we, what we've heard from preseason, like, rumors are that Ali's back on playing on the wing. And I'm saying back because when he was in Croatia, he mainly played on the wing. But the Dynamo brought him in as a striker because of some of the statistics and attributes. So if Ali does move to the wing and we bring in that U22 striker that we're all so excited about, and we actually don't know if he's coming or not because we haven't heard anything, if he does come, I feel like there's also an interesting prospect of Bossy playing at the 10 again and actually having a front three that looks normal, which could also prove positive for Aliu because we've seen what he can do when he plays in that half space. He's actually a lot more creative than just being a man up front. So maybe like a false winger cuts inside just a little bit, let Dorsey advance on that right side. I feel like we could have a really good offense this year. But again, it depends on the U22 striker. But I feel like just that alone makes me feel very optimistic about the play, the way we're going to be playing. Because I'm looking at our front line right now. A U22 striker suddenly makes us one of the youngest and also most exciting front threes in the league. With Quinones, call up to Colombia. Al U's played for Nigeria U20s, so he's obviously a young talent. And that U22 striker is probably going to come from someplace in South America or Mexico, which is very exciting. So they'll all be young. Um, we can maybe extend at least two of them for the actual long-term future so it just makes me really excited about not only this year but also looking forward when Quinones is like 25 or 26 maybe he goes to Europe maybe he stays here but the future is definitely bright for the offense well exciting news that Foxtrot posted earlier was that uh, Colombia has been eliminated so uh, Quinones will probably just finish out the camp with Colombia and then return back and there's no Olympics or anything like that so we shouldn't be missing him for too much longer and uh, you know, maybe Aliyu should start practicing on the right now. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Uh, and just to give a little more context when it comes to that, uh, uh, Colombia was ma- mathematically eliminated from Olympic qualifying for Commonwealth. And the team has been releasing players back to their respective teams. And there's a good chance that Nelson Quinones gets released uh, back to, to the Dynamo for preseason. So that way he gets a title to prepare for a Conca Champions. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. And I also wanted to go back to the interview and just go off with what you guys mentioned about the attacking players because Pat also mentioned in the interview with Glenn Davis that they're looking into bringing in one or two attackers. Uh, we don't know specifically uh, which position, but it's safe to assume it's going to be like a... Uh, it could be uh, forward types of players. And they might be hinting into potentially getting into the uh, young DP area since it's one of the very few players we can sign uh, at this at this time so it's gonna be interesting uh and the other thing i also wanted to bring up is the fact that asher did respond to a fan uh, via twitter last night and pretty much just laid out uh once again like the situation with the team and why they can sign they can just go out there and sign any player just because of the issue with the cap space and i feel like he manages to to explain that very well to like the common fan because i definitely understand why like fans are impatient right now um just based on how this how slow this offseason has been but i feel like the team has been very transparent when it comes to that and it's just gonna be a matter of time until we get like some of the reinforcements or or the reinforcement to the team they're gonna need a lot especially coming out of top and i'm I'm looking forward to see what what type of player we get yeah i'm excited too man um i know the player that we're gonna get is somebody that can automatically compete with Sebas on the stri- in the striker position. And if Sebas is even a shadow of what he was two years ago, I think that our offense is actually above average. In the league. Because last year we did all this while so many doubts of who's going to be the striker. Um, Quinones, a little bit inconsistent from time to time, and no true uh, right winger. So from going from that to maybe a Sebas that can play at that DP level, Quinones after some Columbia's ex- Columbia experience, and Aliu playing on the right side, and you suddenly have depth at all three uh, main forward positions, which is actually a real positive. I don't think people are highlighting enough, possibly being able to play a front three the normal way. So, yeah, even with Achi Achi down, like I said earlier, there's some opportunity for guys to step up. 
Look, man, um, what are we, what are we going to do here? Lost my damn train of thought now. Real quick, while I, where I find my train of thought, and and Juan was on the question, but Ache Ache, there was a, a fan question by Dago. He's like, "Why do you think the Mexican media is hitting hard on Ache Ache so right now, hitting so hard on him?" Huh. I mean, the Mexican media is interesting because they always like to. Um, well, first of all, the national team for Mexico is very important. Um, even though they haven't been very competitive in recent World Cups, there's always a certain demand when you play for the Mexican national team to produce at the national level. And I feel like it's still fresh on their minds. They go last that Messi scored in the 2022 World Cup against Mexico, where Hector Herrera was the closest person to Messi when he scored that golazo. I actually watched a video a couple of days ago of the actual like statistics on how rare that Messi goal was due to Hector Herrera's good positioning and defending on that. So I feel like there's a lot of exigence on that side. So the Mexican media also seemed to play in MLS rather than like a Liga MX team since he didn't come back to Pachuca or any other Mexican team that he could have gone to when he came with us. So I feel like that's why the Mexican media is hating so much on Ache Ache because of his decisions and in general how El Tri has played in recent years. But I don't think you can blame him too much for that. Um, it's obvious that he's aging just a little bit. And I mean, the El Tri has been going down for a while now. So I feel like it's a bit unfair to just rule him out um, the Mexican media is mainly prioritizing him for some of the attacks, which I think is very unfair. But, you know, it is what it is. The media will overreact. I can tell you that most of them are just doing it for clicks. Hector Herrera has actually been playing very well these past couple of years. But, you know, when things happen with the national team, you know, leaders get put to blame. And Hector Herrera is definitely seen as a leader by that Mexican national team. Yeah. All right, Dago says thanks. So and then to and then to go back to the Sebas Sebas being the striker and all right so man look at the Sebas didn't get a, didn't really get a chance to play with the, the the boys this year especially after the especially after the style of play was figured out and we knew what we were doing he was given like one game and then pretty much benched and that was you know the end of it we didn't and then he disappeared into the black black hole. <laughs> You know, we were very, uh, we were very capable with the striker that we had in hand, which was ended up being Corey Barrett. But uh, Corey Barrett wasn't exactly the biggest percentage, wasn't even like the the close to being like the tenth biggest percentage of the team to uh, being a part of the build up play. So the team's going to be able to build up, and I think that's gonna it's going to benefit Sebas. Sebas is a target striker, so we know if we can feed tar- Sebas the ball. He'll find a way to put the ball into the net. Well, here we go, Tiki Taka. Now, granted, I, I know he's not going to be good at Tiki Taka because he's going to want to hold the ball at his feet and then look for the next pass instead of bang, 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 and just move on. But if you know with those crosses, those uh, and getting the ball to him in in the box, it, there's going to be those opportunities. So the, you know, we could see a repeat of the 13 goals, hopefully more. But I think it kind of fits in now. The team is better than what we were playing with before. And so uh, I would not be surprised if, you know, he just puts a little bit of hustle into practice and shows Ben that he, you know, he's out there and he's a change man, new new haircut with the buzz cut, and he's ready to play. I, you know, just fake it to make it. I think he can get out there and he can perform for us and make a difference and be the DP striker that we want him to be. And we need him right now, especially with Ache Ache gone. So now's your time to step up, brother, and, and, and really win over the fans too at the same time. Somebody's here's your opportunity. Earn that, earn earn that DP status, bro. Bro, come on. Yeah, I mean, with one DP down, I mean, last year we played with pretty much only one DP. So if we're thinking positively, we're hoping that the other DP that's now back can produce somewhat similar. I'm not gonna say he's gonna play at an MVP level, but he can recover some of that lost, and some new guys um, that come in can hopefully produce a net positive from the situation. Like I genuinely believe the signings that we make in the striker position or the winger position are going to decide this transfer window, even with the injury of Ache Ache's a success or a failure. So I believe that some of the talents down in South America or Mexico are enough to make us into an MLS Cup contender, considering how we played last year with so many doubts. Imagine us actually having depth at the winger positions with Ache Ache back maybe midway to the season, worst case scenario, and Seba's actually banging in goals like he did in 2021. Like, that team suddenly looks very, very good. I feel like people are underestimating that. If Sebas just plays half of how he did in 2021, I think this team definitely can compete for an MLS Cup. 
Because I feel like that's what we were missing last year. Just goals, goals, goals upon goals from somebody that has the individual brilliance at the striker position. And Corey Barrett did very well leading the press. I know Ben Olsen likes that. But goals, he scored a couple, but it wasn't anything like... He always missed some easy chances. Ali U as well. I feel like we could definitely do better with somebody that has that clinical edge. With some of the service that he was given from Coco, uh, Nelson was robbed of a couple of assists, um, Bossy as well. So it's just the little stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, who can get that final touch in and just score a tap in? <laughs> so, yeah, I'm definitely excited for Sebas. I think he can recover. I actually have very high hopes for him this year. Looking at Ali too, you know, to, like, finish his t- chances. And yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll be keeping an eye on that for sure this, this season. So, Ali oh, yeah, so- I, t- I told I told I told Colin we keeping tabs last night when uh, we I went on his his show last night that I believe in Aliu. So if you you know Aliu can go out there and just start putting the ball in the frigging back of the net, it's going to change everybody's perspective on him because he did everything else so well. He had the intangibles. He checked up a lot of the boxes. He just he played so well. He used his speed to his advantage. He he played the position correctly. He had. You know, sometimes his first touch wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. So, but it was above yeah. average. So I'm okay. I'm okay with that. It was just his freaking finishing, and a lot of times the keeper was, uh, you know, got the good stay. But there was a lot of times he just had an easy miss, and the keeper couldn't even touch the ball because we missed so bad. So I think, like everybody, just is assuming his long run, his long season that he had, no break between Europe and here. Uh, so now he gets his break. He got a you know month and a half break. He just got he just got married. He just he just turned had a birthday last week. He's gonna be a rejuvenated man. He's happy. He always looks happy anyway, especially when you see him in a photo. So I, I think that man he's he's not gonna be in his head. He's gonna come out and he's gonna give it his all and watch you see him. He's just gonna start scoring. And if Sebas fails, then he's gonna pick right up right up where uh, where Sebas left off. If Sebas doesn't fail, then boom, bro. Uh, you know, we got a back up to Sebas, we got a back up to Quinones. He can play on the right with Quinones up top with Sebas, and you know, Bossy and Sebas fight for that other position in midfield. So uh, there's a lot of depends, depends, what is, what is, but there's, you know, there's potential there. Yeah. Ali, you can't hurt me again, man. After all those <laughs> easy chances you gave up, I'm numb to it. So I'm feeling we can only go up from there when it comes to actually scoring some goals. But I was watching some highlight reels and, you know, just overall game feel on him. And when I wrote my article, I watched his U.S. Open Cup games when he first came along. And I feel like that's the version of Ali that we want. And I feel like we can get because, remember, that was fresh off of Europe. Like, he's still, you know, at the prime of his physique. You could tell that the season was wearing him down later. When he just came from Europe, when he was playing, like, a somewhat normal schedule, he was making the runs. He was being clinical. I think he scored three goals and one assist in five U.S. Open Cup games. One being, he didn't score in the final. So, pretty much before the final, he was elite. And the semifinal, he also missed that easy chance. But, you know, we don't talk about that. So, <laughs> so in general, that U.S. Open Cup run, I feel, tells me a lot about him as a player. And his ability to someday be a poacher in the box who can also make runs, which is exactly what Ben Olsen wants. Someone that can bang in the goals while making those runs, being that guy that hustles first on the line. So if we can have that U.S. Open Cup version of Ali, you man, who that's going to bring a tear to every man's eye. Let me tell you that. So you're you're searching for players. I've, got a, I've actually got another fan question that I can incorporate right here. And this was by Sig from Dynam, uh, from La Hinchada. So, and Foxtrot, feel free to answer this one as well, too. But outside of the couple teams in MLS, Colorado, enter Miami, it seems to be quiet for many clubs this window, which is not really true. I've seen a lot of kind of movement. There's just not been no movement on our side. But do you feel the Dynamo are timing this market in conjunction with other top teams? I'm going to let you answer this one first. I want to hear your thoughts on Yeah, that's fine. So, Andreas, do you think or do you feel the Dynamo are timing this market in conjunction with other top teams? So, basically, the question's being asked. There's other teams that are not making moves right now and they've been holding off. And and are the Dynamo, Dynamo kind of, you know, <laughs> in conjunction with other teams working the market? Are they fighting for players, I guess, is what he's asking. I think that's a definite possibility. Like, I, there's... Like of all like the chatter we see in the off season, there's definitely that that scenario where like where just teams are just fighting for a specific player and we just don't know about it. 
and and for us it's just tough because like like we said previously and just the fact that Pat and Asher have been pretty vocal about this like we've like we've been pretty strained as well in the off season uh given that we had like a pretty successful season compared to like a good chunk of MLS and that's where it hurts our cap space the most because successful teams have a harder time trying to keep the same roster or trying to upgrade that depending on how they move players and and I feel like for us like it's I can definitely understand the frustration with that but but at the same time, it's um. I feel like when Ashley just just mentioned the fact that we're tr- they're trying to see like which are the best players that fit the roster the best to see if they can just like invest on them. I also I also think that's a factor because it, we've noticed like it's been pretty clear this off season how they've been pretty patient when it comes to pulling the trigger with a player. Um, and yeah, I'm I I do trust that in the process. I'm not gonna complain about that since Pat and Asher have been pretty vocal about it. Um. And just getting the players or addressing the the really the the type of players that we need in the roster, and and yeah, like it's it's just like a weird gray area, honestly. Yeah, I agree. Um, and actually, there's some funny news about this. Earlier on in the transfer window, I was hearing some sources tell me that the Dynamo were actually in on some relatively decent names, right? At least for MLS. But just other teams kept taking them up. Like there was this one kid, um, Fidel Barajas. Even a second, I have to check up on something. But just in general, um, I don't think the Dynamo have actually been passive this window. It's just the players they want. Some of them have been taken up, and um, part of the problem just has to be that you know with competitive teams everywhere, when you're trying to reach that final top five percent, it, it's a struggle. So I feel like the Dynamo definitely have to improve from here. Um, in terms of their tactics on who they're going to sign because players are going off quickly, top teams are grabbing them. So it just has to be about finding that diamond in the rough, which I'm sure they're looking for, and they have some names down that they think they can get. But it's definitely been a struggle to land some big name. So yeah, and with that, I think we can also like transition to some of the news that happened uh, this week. We did get a couple more Adamo news before the Achi Achi Kaisa news came out. And the one that the first one that happened also happened like after we released it, uh, the the last episode was Thor getting transferred to Debrecen in Hungary. We did talk a little bit about that since uh, Tom Bogard that uh, pretty much broke the news already on that and it's now official. Obviously, we don't have a transfer fee to go off since uh, MLS usually just keeps that on the wraps. We only know that there's a sell on clause with the transfer. So in in case that Thor gets sold when he's in Hungary. He's got we do get a percentage of that. And that's pretty much all we know. But like we said in the last episode, it was something that had to do with uh, playing time and also getting opportunities, especially in Europe. So good luck with Thor with that. Uh what do you think, OSG? Yeah, and <clears throat> you know, I'm okay with this move altogether, Thor. Uh it, it's I'm I'm disappointed that he didn't work out to, with all the potential that he has because he can be a killer striker if he's in the right system and it didn't look like he's in the right system with us and he's more of a you know what would Ben would call as a lazy striker he's a target striker he'd he'd rather be in the box and you find him in the box and he'll and he'll hit the back of the net and he doesn't want to defend he gets frustrated so if he loses the ball he, he gives up whenever there's there could be a play where he wins the ball right back because the rest of the team is still pressing but he gives up, he turns around, he throws his hands up in the air, and he, he just – a lot of plays he does that. He gives up, and he doesn't uh, he doesn't read the play and see the play. And so I, I'm okay with this. I'm fine with this. This just means that, you know, somebody else is going to have to come in or the two kids that we drafted, someone, one of them are going to have to step up and, you know, uh, and see that there's, a, there's some actual playing time available on the first team at the striker position. So – uh, hit the ground hard and, and put some goals in the back of the net during preseason. Uh, today is Sunday as we're recording here on Noodle Time. The team leaves for Mexico for Guadalajara on Monday, and you, you know they've got four they got four games coming up, and those games are against. Sorry if we're jumping ahead, Fox Trap, but those games are against Chivas Reserves twice, uh, and Leones Negras and and Tecos, and. So those are some uh, some decent playing time for some players to figure out if they can uh, punch into the first team and and figure out what's going on and 
And, and that, that could also play into what, what's keeping Pat and Asher from bringing somebody in. Cause every, every time we make a, every time something happens, uh, it, it, it triggers the next move. So uh, I'd be yeah. curious, be curious what they do. Yeah. Um, just jumping back on Thor real quick. Um, it's sad that he had to go this way, but I feel like the writing was on the wall for a couple months now at minimum. Um, just wasn't getting any playing time. I'm filling up an international spot, I believe as well. So just in general, this move is best for everybody involved. Just um, let him go to Europe, try to um, compete for a UEFA spot with his team. You know, they play in the first division of Hungary. So I think it's Hungary, right? Yes. Yeah. Hungary. So, I mean, wishing him the best. Hope he, you know, represents us in the UEFA Champions League somehow, some way. You know, always going to wish him luck. But just wasn't meant to be here. And, I mean, the U22 striker, I think, is going to be an upgrade in terms of output. So, in general, this move had to be done. And I feel like it pretty much highlights what everybody's been saying for a while now. And it's that we're going to get a new striker or winger or attacking piece or maybe both. So, in general, it's sad, but it was necessary. So, yeah. And that was also a good scoop for the preseason schedule. I don't know why they haven't announced it yet, but... Yeah, I guess I guess it doesn't really matter since we won't be able to uh, stream it, you know. But but yeah, and the yeah, other piece of news. Even, oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I don't even have times. I just have opponents. No, oh, yeah, no, yeah. no, no times. Not even what day it is. I just know it's four games in the time span that they're there, and it's you know obviously it's those three teams playing Chivas reserve twice. So yeah, so yeah, I guess we'll just have to keep an eye out. You know, there's a. Uh, us in Hinchada, we do have one way we'll we'll figure things out. It might be a couple hours late, late might be a few minutes late, but we'll be kind of pervy to just the basic the basics things of what's going on. But yeah, like you said, not streaming, won't be able to see it. They won't be posting, they won't be twittering, they won't be tweeting, they won't be xing, they won't be gramming it. Damn man, like come on, what why everything gets so tight? Even even the game in Orlando, it, it won't be streamed. It will be closed to the public. So, like, yeah, dang. But whatever. Uh, the season's very close, very close by. So, like, we just got to suck it up a little bit, Buttercup. <laughs> yeah. I, I will never know if Aliyah scored the hat trick, you know. So, that's... Yeah. yeah. If, if, we didn't, if we didn't see it, it didn't happen. So <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll find that one out because, like we did last year, we just went to all the, the opponent's uh, teams and just watched their, me- their media market. <laughs> and yeah. <out> there, <laughs> that's where we found a bunch of stuff besides of what we were getting told. So, we knew when to look and where to look, too, at the same time. But, yeah. Yeah. Scares me if I you I miss this hat trick. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 find a way to get that. Yeah, yeah. someone get a time machine and go back and just catch it. <laughs> but. No, yeah. And um, the last piece of news, uh, news coming out for last week uh, was uh, Manuel Junco being hired as the director of identification for Dynamo. This is a big one. Uh, this he's gonna be assisting in the scouting department for Dynamo and obviously identifying those players that we need, along with Asher and Pat. And he he previously had a uh, Experience with Austin FC as his latest club. I think they just hired like a new uh, technical director as well, and he was in that position. And he worked there for about three years. He did come uh, before that. He did come up from I wish like Krakow back in Poland, and before that he was working with uh, also Pat Onstad and Ashton Mendelson back in uh, when they were in, in Columbus Crew for about three years. And before that, he also had experience with uh, Liverpool, being as a head scout for one of the center regions in Europe. Uh, he's got a lot of experience. Uh, definitely, I'm not gonna say no to that. I w- we'll take him. Yeah. Cool. No, and the, and the, also, the other thing that that also popped out of me was just like the fact of of having like a good chunk of time with Liverpool. I think he was there for like about five or seven years. I can't remember correctly, but he did spend a a good chunk of time with Liverpool before and going to Columbus, and. Obviously, we know the connection in between Pat and Asher, so that definitely helped uh, soothe things and also bring him into Houston uh, to have like a kind of a leadership role with the club. And obviously, a big deal because we're trying to identify more players, specifically like trying to get more homegrowns into the pipeline uh, to come out of Dynamo too. So I'm looking forward to that. 
Well, this is always a big move when you're when you're improving the scouting network and the and the the people that have got eyes on players coming in to improve your team. And this also just shows that Ted is is serious is a serious owner and serious about <clears throat> making the Houston Dynamo and the Houston Dash uh, a product a worthy product and a, and a, and something that the fans are wanting to look at and come see and 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 improve the value on the product too and so he he's here to he's not here to just kind of one and done he's here to build us up and and you know maybe leave us after that but he's going to get us up there and and you know put us in the right place and he's doing it on both sides even on the Houston dash side when you look at dash you're like come on attendance is low you know, why are you putting all this money into it? But, you know, he wants to make the Dash relevant again. And so they're going to try, even though this season is going to be tough for the Dash coming up. But, uh, you know, it, it, it just shows that Ted is very serious about just, man, everything that we're doing for the Dynamo, all the positions that you're hiring, all the positions you're creating, all the turnover that there was. You, you let people go and you brought people in. So it's like it's, you know, it's and it's obviously working. It's obviously working, so let's just keep it up. Let's figure it out. Let's. Uh, we got about three weeks before the first game against St. Louis, so uh, let's hurry up and and do something to calm the fans down before some people pull their hair out or some people turn white. Like Boxtrot got in his beard right there. <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so. Get it on. No, yeah. And I'm, I'm excited. Obviously, for Dynamo 2, we still don't know a schedule. We still don't know a roster. We're expecting that uh, this news to come out at some point. I feel like they're more secretive than, than the Dash when it comes to that. So it remains to see what kind of uh, roster we're going to have or the kind of homegrowns that we are going to try to bring up to, to the second team to get more minutes. Yeah. And, well. Just real experience. Going on the academy, going up to Dyna 2. But like I said, they should be getting us something they said late, end of the month. But now I'm thinking it's going to move to early February. But we'll see. We're definitely going to get some more information. Man, I TV, need yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, it's going to be a good one. So we're going to be uh, watching all these teams play at the same time. Like, it's, it's slow as it is already, but it's going to. April's gonna come in, and all the three teams are gonna be start over again. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a busy schedule for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Yeah, seeing that you talking about busy schedule, seeing that dash schedule, and just bro, there's just so many conflicts, and yeah. Oh my god, and I'm like oh, I hated this, and like, and then some are just on Friday night. And those are gonna be the hardest for me with the the two and a half hour drive in between. It's just going to be friggin' insane. I'm hoping, you know, I can make it still make as many as I was hoping to go to. But, you know, now it's like, Jesus, I might have to just be driving to Houston every friggin' weekend, man. Dang. You know, it's going to be crazy. But oh, I don't know. I, I'm just ready for the season to get friggin' started. Let's get into it. Let's get into the CCC with... Uh, you know, and it's and it's crazy. We we talk about CCC comes first, but we our first home game is against SKC, and then we have our friggin' home game against St. Louis at friggin' nine thirty on a Tuesday. Stupid night, ridiculous. Dumbest thing. schedule ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing that that benefits there is I could actually get off work at regular time and still make it to the game on time, two and a half hours away. So. So I guess that's the only benefit, you know, but now there's no going to work the next day if I go to that game on that Tuesday night, which I plan on doing. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be my last thoughts of today. I need to go real quick, but I'm excited for um, CCC, the compacted schedule for everybody um, with Dash, with Dyna 2 and Houston Dynamo. I feel like this is the most soccer we've had in Houston and I don't know how long with Women's Gold Cup also coming here. And then next year with the World Cup, it's all going to be fantastic, and I'm just so excited for this much soccer. I feel like, I feel like people are going to have to watch the Dynamo now, just from the soccer overload we're going to get in these next two years. I mean, I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it everywhere. Like I go to Kroger, I saw a Houston Dynamo shirt a couple of days ago, and I was so excited, I almost wanted to give them a hug, but 
because I never see Dynamo shirts out there. But I feel like in these past two months, I've seen so many. So I feel like people are finally starting to tune in. And even with the congested schedule, I do think that fans will start showing up a little bit more. Which, I mean, it's just, I feel like that's the thing we've all been wanting deep down ever since Matt Jordan left. Was just get fans into the stadium, make it feel like it's a European match. Because sometimes, you know, Shell Energy and back in the olden days in that college stadium, um, you know, think magical things can happen here in Houston. I'm excited for that. So I'll be heading off now. Yeah. And that's a good way to close it. So as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And, you know, it's the new, y'all. Leech is up. Oh. <laughs>